Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures, and it's that time again. It is time for some weekly painting progress. Now I'd like to preface things this week by saying that mostly this is finish up already started projects painting progress. But you know what? Progress is progress. A win is a win, no matter what. And I did manage to get a few things finished up, so I'm grateful about that. Especially despite the fact that myself and the family went out of town for a few days and had some much needed relaxation despite the intense sun and humidity that we seem to be experiencing all around California at the moment. Nevertheless, we did manage to get a couple of things finished up. So yeah, I am absolutely going to have to hit the hobby shop in the next few days because this is officially the end of my freedom of the summer I officially have to go back to work uh, this week, tomorrow or Tuesday, in fact, come to think of it. And so we started things off. This was one of those Fireforge Templar, no, not it wasn't the Templars, uh, the Russian Infantry. It was one of the Russian Infantry guys, except he's got a Frostgrave Warthog head that I didn't really finish painting, and some old Imperial Gunner arms. Why? Just because we could. Why not, right? I remember when I was filming the video on those guys, I, I was just thinking to myself, am I really going to go ahead and paint this? And I thought to myself, yes. Yes, I am. I am absolutely going to commit to it. Here we have... Ew, it does not look good up close. I, I really tried with this, and I hate painting white. And I hate playing around with trying to get some shading, so I was just goofing around with some Gundam pins as well as uh, the regular Agrax stuff. And I'm not super pleased with the results, but again, when it's super close up and zoomed in, uh, you know, the results are a little bit less than appealing. But yeah, you can see all kinds of awful brush marks and strokes there, and a general lack of discern as to what's what but this is what was his name rufus from final fantasy 7 he was uh one of the shinra dudes the boss dude if i remember correctly but like his hand here kind of just warped and melted into the gun or i just can't tell what's what and then they had like these awful support removals here i don't know if i did this it's hard to say but i painted him nonetheless and you know what from a distance despite his superb height there, I, I don't think it's going to be a huge issue. I think the glossiness is going to be more of an issue than anything. Now, this next figure, I cannot remember what his name was. It was like one of the Emperor leader dudes that Comet Lord had come up with. And what's always cool about Comet Lord stuff is that there's at least five or six variations on each figure so like if you look over the monthly releases when he was doing them on patreon uh, or tribes for that matter you may only see like four or five figures but then each of those figures is going to have a bunch of different variations so you can have him with with without the blades there's you know all kinds of options with the clothing but i thought this was a cool looking evil leader dude with the gauntlet and the floating blades. Personally, I would have added one more blade, and I'm actually still kind of tempted to stick another one on there somewhere. I couldn't figure out what to do color-wise with the, you know, astral projection, telepathy, psychic powers, magic, manifestation, whatever's powering those blades, but otherwise it looks cool. I begged and pleaded if they were going to go with, like, a, I think it was supposed to be like this Magitek empire, but if you're going to do Magitek, you need to have some sort of mechs. I mean, maybe it's just me playing Final Fantasy VI when I was young. But when I think Magitek, I think robots. Magitek armor, obviously. One of the cool things also is that Comet Lord is going to be doing some interesting stuff in the near future. So hopefully, uh, as he gets all of his ducks all lined up in a row, because he's had his patreon stuff on hiatus now of course all of his models are already available and i have my fair share of backlog i gotta get through but uh there's a lot of unique stuff and a very soulsborne-esque vibe with a lot of it maybe not as intense or as gruesome 
as like bestie Arabs, but the feeling is there. So if that's something that might interest you, by all means, I wholeheartedly recommend check out his stuff. I'm a big fan. All right, what else we got here? I'm not super pleased with the results of this guy, but it's done nonetheless. And this is another one of those uh, NYX suits from Calamity's Ashes. I feel like it needs to be dirtied up significantly. And I was thinking of an old Dorvac kit that I remember building for my brother eons ago. And it had a similar paint scheme. Blue body with a black torso head and then the silver sensor array. And I want to say it had a big orange gun. Or maybe that was a different Dorvac powered armor that we had. We had a few and there's just tons of them anyways. But uh, I've been back to trying to get some of these suits printed up when the weather has been cooperative but it hasn't literally the only time i ever want to print right now is in the dead of night and then you know at the crack of dawn go out and deal with it because my printer is in the garage and it's just sweat inducing right now not fun so we paint it and we print it when we can but these are cool suits anyways if you're curious about them. They're pretty good sized. And there's even larger. I have not yet printed up any of the bigger mech suits. But we will do it one of these days. There's two different variants on the mechs. So hopefully we'll get them done. When the weather's not miserable. And in celebration of finally receiving my gambler's chest. Never mind the piles of other Kingdom Death models that need to get finished first. But... We've got the pinup butcher. No, God, no, what am I saying? This is the pinup forsaker, isn't it? I don't even know anymore. Pinup forsaker sounds right. So, yeah. She was in the original pinups of death box, if I remember correctly. So, she may not be as gigantic as some of the current models. And speaking of Kingdom Death stuff anyways, I gotta figure out what should I start with in that gambler's chest. What are you guys curious to see? My personal thought is, because I just want to start posting stuff, and I'm going to start posting my Shadows of Brimstone stuff as I start working my way through that as well. Uh, if there's anything in particular you guys want to see from any of those boxed games, by all means, let me know here. Let me know on Discord. And if you're not on Discord... Uh, you know, that's like one of the few things that I, I, I'm going to gatekeep with the whole Patreon thing. I don't I don't like to beg and plead, but that's like, at least that's like the true believers or something. I don't know. No, it's just a nice token of appreciation. Anyways, moving on as we continue to have a mix of both painted and painted, printed and cast figures. This was one from Erkman's Minis of Spectre from Dungeons and Fighters. Or DNF Arena, I should say, because Dungeons and Fighters was the original side scrolling MMORPG. And I tried to get the highlighted colors and they're not really showing up as nicely as I would have hoped. But she is just a cool looking model. And I've already broken her naturally. And unfortunately looks like you can't really see the difference in the color of her shades but oh well I did not want to paint her eyes as well maybe I need to throw some ink back there behind her lenses I don't think it's gonna make a whole lot of difference though so. what else we got the first of my Byzantine cataphracts now I Fussed and fretted over these guys far more than I really should have. The first thing I wanted was a really blue coat. And rather than just use a straight blue, I, I messed around. And I think this is actually the result of me throwing a bunch of ink washes on various stuff. Not that you can tell I did much with the actual barding of the horse. It looks kind of plain and boring, but eh, I'll try being more fancy with the other ones. I really wanted to at least get the rider to a degree that I liked. And I thought I had a bit more gold and highlighting on the actual little button 
plate things, studs that keep all of the armor in place there, but it isn't really noticeable on camera. I think the light's kind of reflecting it. I mean, he's a good looking model for his size, which is incredibly historic because we need to have him here to post with his buddies. So I have been plugging away at trying to get one of these Order of the Ash and Dawn done from Conquest, and they are just absolutely massive. I love it. Like it it's got a good solid heft for being a plastic model. There is some heft to this guy, and this is just such a lopsided fight here. I mean, I love the fact he just looks like he's ready to cream the crap out of anybody stupid enough to get in his path. Now, <laughs> and here's the other thing. I'm not normally a fan, number one, of human ranges when you have all kinds of crazy fantastical stuff. But... I don't know, there's something just about the pageantry and flourish of the models that Parabellum's put out. That I mean, I, I, I'm impressed. So much so to the point that I'm like, hmm, do I want to go order the other... Uh, order the other order? <sighs> yeah, that was a bad pun. But no, uh, what is it, like the Crimson Tower or something? They have like all this kind of spiky, janky-looking armor all over them. And they look pretty imposing too, but I mean, this guy is just a beast compared to his friends here. I think this is like the uh, actual hero one, since he's kind of arcing up here, uh, rearing the horse up, now that I think about it. But I wasn't satisfied with just one of these guys. I had to go paint another one. I think he's my favorite of the bunch. His absolute skull face helmet there. And I mean, he, he just looks, you know, he is ready to lay that smack down. With one of the Centaur Avatara here. Another of the cavalry models from Conquest. There's some interesting stuff. There is absolutely no denying that. And then again, as I've mentioned many times, for me, for a long time, the Varen Guard were like the pinnacle of big, bad, elite-looking cavalry models. And, and unfortunately for him, the Avatar stole that crown, and now this guy is just going to knock it out of the way. I really like this model. One of the things having to actually have sat down and paint him was figuring out what everything is on his armor. And that was a chore and a half. There's a lot of stuff going on here. And the other thing I hate about painting cavalry is having to get everything, especially when they're wearing, you know, some kind of elaborate armor getup trying to get everything underneath all those flowing robes. So that's one of those reasons I never glue anything on the base, especially when it comes to cavalry. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm absolutely going to be picking up some of those Wadroon Triceratops guys. I was going to say Raptor Riders, but I already have them, and I've yet to actually finish one. So I probably should do something about that first before I go and... Start working on more cavalry models, right? Right? Maybe. But I gotta say, I am pleased that I got some stuff done. Hopefully, next week. Uh, probably not as much to show. Since uh, I do have to actually spend time at work. But again, a lot of this stuff on this week's video is stuff that was actually getting pretty close to completion. Maybe I'll try to finish up some of the other models I got laying around, except for, what's her name? Spectre. Spectre I just had to paint as soon as I saw it. Of course, Erkman just did a Jean d'Arc from Fate, and I'm probably going to have to get on that, like, immediately now. So, who knows? Maybe she'll show up too. But anyway, if you're interested in any of these models yourselves, as always, we have those links down below. Feel free to check them out. If you guys have any questions on any of this, feel free to hit me up with them, because... 
um, at some point or another in the day, I'm probably lurking on the internet ready to answer it. So, with that said then, this has been High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures, saying thanks for watching, and we will see you back here soon. Bye-bye!